Hi, uh, good morning, all of you guys. Uh, this is Vamshi here. Uh, I was a trainer for uh, the data science related technologies. Uh, hope all of you can hear me, guys. Uh, can anyone, can you please confirm is a audible? Yes, you are audible. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, guys. So, guys, um, today is the, the first session for you. Um, I'll tell you about that. Actually, I'll tell you about our program and all these things I'll tell you. But anyhow, for you guys, uh, it is going to be the first session for you. So I just want to take a couple of classes, actually, guys. A couple of classes means maybe a three days. I want to take some kind of a demo sessions. So where I'm going to introduce something about, like, what is data science? Why do you require? That means what the clients are expecting from these data science related technologies. So what are the main important concepts which we have to learn, the main areas which we have to concentrate about that? Uh, just before going to this, guys, uh, just before starting with that, I just want to know how much extent uh, you know about what is data science. Uh, I'm not expecting anything like uh, you should be answering it correctly. What do you ex what you know about a data science or what you are trying to understand what is about the data science? Uh, can anyone, guys, anyone, can you come, please come forward and you can uh, have a small points of discussion. Anyone? Yes, sir. Actually, data science is a like multidisciplinary field where we like use multiple tech stack to solve a particular business uh, problem, which can involve cloud uh, mm -hmm. statistics and Python as a programming language. Mm -hmm. And then okay. we can, yeah. Okay. Any core areas of this data science? Like, uh, what are the different concepts which you have to learn in this data science? Yes, a machine learning yes. we have to learn okay, or okay. implement. Okay, yeah. fine. Yes, absolutely, guys. The terms, because, yeah, guys, nowadays, really, uh, it has been a, becoming a common uh, knowledge to everyone, actually. Everybody has to know about this data science. So, like, in some earlier days, they used to talk about something about uh, C language, how C language should be commonly learned by everybody. Nowadays, independent of independent of whether you are in um, whether you are from bachelors or whether you are from engineering or whether you are from a BCom or it may be a MBA or even it may be a civil engineer, whether it may be anybody. Nowadays, it is becoming a common skill, actually, guys. In coming future, nowadays, even you have been you may have seen if you have been uh, uh, as a coming as a fresh graduate from your colleges. So whenever they are conducting some kind of and whenever there is a some kind of an campus recruitment is going on. So as part of their recruitment test also, they are adding some skills related to the data analysis. Okay, some kind of an data analysis questions or some kind of an uh, uh, the problems like what is going to be deep learning. They're adding some kind of a questions to them actually. To just test to just to test it, how much extent you are aware about this particular data science concept actually. So it has been became a common skill, actually. It Everybody has to, nowadays, everybody has to have this particular knowledge about that because everywhere we are working with the data, guys. Everywhere we are working with the data. It's not only that data means only banks will have a data. Nowadays, not only banks. Everywhere, everywhere we are going to be having a data. Everywhere we are having a data. Even, for example, for, uh, for example, let us talk about a mechanical engineer. So a mechanical engineer is going to work with the machines. Nowadays, everything has been become automated. At how much speed that particular machine is rotating, how much torque it is generating, how much input the input power it is taking actually. Something like that, everywhere we are working about a data. So there is some data generated by the machines actually. So whenever a machine is going to be running, for example, if I talk about, uh, for example, some kind of an, uh, the flights, whenever the flights will travel, there are going to generate a lot of data. For every one hour of travel, it is going to generate some kind of a terabytes of data is going to be generated actually, guys. Okay, so imagine that within six months of time, how much data it is going to be generating. So we are not talking about, so as, as, as part of our data science, we are not bothered about how the data storage is there. We are not talking about the data storage actually, guys. Where it is stored, how it will be stored, we don't talk about the data storages that will be taken care by the data engineers uh, or it may be a database experts. Those people are going to be taking about that. 
even we are not talking about how to process the data actually guys which is going to be data processing that is also we are not talking about that so storage of data processing of data these are going to be generally done by the role called as which is going to be what we are generally calling it as that which is going to be data engineers now data engineering also has been became a very uh, a popular role actually guys which is having a very huge demand as of now so coming to the data storages you should be knowing about some kind of a systems like uh, any anything like which is going to be database systems we have to talk about or some kind of an cloud storages we have to talk about or some kind of a big data systems we have to talk about that coming to data processing also we have to learn something about big data systems okay using big data you can store as well as we can process the data nowadays one of the very popular framework which are going to be gets working for data processing is going to be a spark actually guys that is going to be what the data engineering roles are going to be doing it actually guys there are data engineering roles actually but coming to our role it is going to be what we are going to call it as a data science role actually guys it is going to be data science role actually so data science is going to be nothing but we are not interested to learn about how to store the data or how to process the data our main role is to guys data science is all about doing some kind of an analysis a data analysis or what we can say that it is going to be understanding the data actually then you may get a doubt sir if it is becoming only you are talking about analysis then why don't you call it as a data analyst why you are calling it as a data science we are going to call about that data analysis means it is only all about understanding the data but data science is not only only about analyzing the data or understanding the data based on this analysis the data you can do some kind of an predictions also what we can do it actually guys we can do some kind of a predictions what we are going to be doing it actually so understand the data analyze your data and based on that we are going to be doing some kind of a predictions so what has been happened in the past analyze it what could happen in the future that is what we are going to be doing as part of this particular data science as uh, somebody has been said i didn't remember your name i didn't see your name so somebody said that it is going to be one of an interdisciplinary field why it is called as an interdisciplinary field means it is not like learning a single skill or as learning a single technology and we cannot say that i can enter into data science learning a data science is all about learning some different different skills we have to learn it actually different different skills inside that data analysis is going to be one skill actually guys it is only one skill i am not saying that if you learn a data analysis you are going to become say data scientist so the guys who are working on data science is going to be what we are going to call them as a data scientist we are going to call them as actually but it's not only one skill of analysis there are multiple skills are that are going to be gets required actually guys here just to make you understand this particular concept to analyze this particular data we are going to be taking some help of the machines actually guys machine means it is nothing but it is not any machine means it is not going to be something like an a mechanical device or something like that machine means it is your computer machine means it is going to be nothing but it is your computer actually guys so what we are going to do is we are going to take the help of the machines now what the machines are saying is you give me the data i am going to analyze and i am going to understand the data so machines are saying that see guys analysis is nothing but what we are going to do that what we are going to do that somebody has given the data to us and we are going to analyze that particular data actually guys we are just analyzing the data actually but here the main skill is going to be nothing but guys we are taking the help of the machines machines are going to start machines are capable to learn from the data actually so that particular technique is nothing but what we are going to call it as an a machine learning actually guys actually data science contains so many other skills are going to be required so but if you want to understand all the other skills first of all we have to understand what do you mean to say about a data what is meaning of a machine learning actually 
So learning about data science is going to be, as I told you, know, there are multiple skills are going to be there, which we are going to study them later, which we are going to study them later, actually, guys. As I told you, know, I'm going to take somewhere around three days of demos. I'll take it, actually. <clears throat> and then if you attend that particular three demo classes, then you are going to understand it. Like, what do you mean to say data science? What is machine learning? All these things, it will take some time, actually, guys. Just within one day, you cannot completely understand what do you mean to say data science, actually. Just give me a second, guys. Just give me a second. Yeah. So then let us make it understand. Let us take some two classes, actually, guys, to make you understand what do you mean to say about a machine learning, actually. So the name itself is suggesting, actually, guys. The name itself is suggesting, saying that machine learning, actually. What do you mean to say machine learning means? Machines are going to learn from the data. They are going to learn them actually, guys. So what the machines are saying is, whenever you are trying to analyze your data, instead of you doing the analysis, you give the data to us. You give the data to us. Machines are going to learn by, by themselves. We are going to learn from them. And we are going to tell you what is the data, how is the data. Based on that, we can do some kind of a predictions. So machine learning is all about giving the data to the machine, guys. Giving the data to the machine. And machine is going to learn the data. That is what it has been learned, is what we are going to call it as insights. Based on that insights, we can do some kind of a predictions, actually. Once again, guys, machine learning is going to be nothing but the task is. Let me tell you about what is data science later, guys. For the timing, I'm just going to tell you about what is going to be about a machine learning first of all. After that, we'll discuss about the remaining points actually. Remaining things, we are going to discuss it later actually. So give the data to the machine. Machine is going to study the data and it is going to get some kind of an insights. Based on that particular insights, we can do some kind of a predictions actually. Guys. That is what the simple machine learning talks about. That. So don't think that, sir, if everything is done by the machine, then what is going to be our work actually, guys? What is going to be our work? We'll discuss it, guys. We'll discuss it. Okay? Yes. Uh, I think uh, who has been? Uh, anyone, guys? Can you tell me some simple use case of machine learning in the real applications, guys? Anyone? One small use case. Anyone? Bank fraud detection. Okay. Bank fraud detections. Okay. Okay, guys. I'll tell you in the easiest way. I'm going to tell you about a small example, but I'm not taking a bank fraud detection. Okay. It is also going to come under the fraud detection only, but fraud means there are two things actually, guys. A transaction is going to be a fraud transaction. That is going to be, we know that. Or an insurance company, we call them as a fraud claims. We are going to call it as. That means the claim has been, is not occurred actually, but it has been fraud. That means it is going to be wrongly. They have been, said that we have to claim this particular insurance. That is going to be nothing but a kind of an, a, false, a false claims or which is going to be a false claims what we are going to call it as. Okay, in the easiest way, I'll tell you the example, guys. Okay, so please try to interact too, guys. Uh, just don't be uh, dumb. Uh, you try to just interact with me so that it good, it's an online class. So why we have been, uh, why you have been opted for the online classes actually, guys? It is due to, actually, we have started initially due to the COVID restrictions we have been started. But after the COVID restrictions has been, after the COVID restrictions has been relaxed. So guys are, the peop, the participants, I think you, all of you, we are based in Hyderabad. But I think so, all of you guys are not from Hyderabad. Maybe maximum 80% or six, at least 70, 60%, you are going to be out of Hyderabad actually. So that really, this COVID has brought a completely a change in the way we are, uh, this trainings has been became a completely change. So now guys are connecting not only from all over the India, so all over the world we are connecting actually guys. Even some guys are there from, from Denmark. Okay, some somebody is going to be from Netherlands, we have some participants are there. So it has been brought an opportunity to connect, to create a platform which are going to be gets connecting actually. So it, it is not a kind of a video training. It is a live instructor-led class only. So please be interactive actually, guys. Okay. Let us talk about a banking example. I'm taking a same banking example as somebody has suggested. Let us talk about an example of a loans department actually, guys. Loans department. 
So what is a loans department will do in a bank is basically, you know, that they will uh, give the loans to the customers, not only giving the loans, they have to verify whether the customers are paying the loans promptly or not. So simply their responsibility is not only just to give the loans. So customer applied the loan and just not only giving the loans. So we have to verify, we have to have a complete observation about whether the customers are paying the EMS promptly or not. We know them. Who are not paying the EMS promptly, they are called as defaulters. We don't call them as frauders. Fraud means there are different cases. Fraud means who is going to uh, do some, uh, that means they will give some kind of an fraud documents or a wrong documents or something like that. They will get a loan in a different way. Okay, in a wrong way, if we get the claims, that is going to be what we can call it as fraud. We are not frauders actually. Defaulters and non-defaulters, we are going to call them as actually. Who are defaulters? Who are non-defaulters? We know them. Defaulters are nothing but who does not pay the EMS promptly. And non-defaulters are nothing but who is going to pay the EMS promptly. Those, those are called as defaulters and non-defaulters. Now, the main, the main target here is the banks are giving the loans. The banks are giving the loans, but how they are giving the loans? They are collecting some lot of information like what is the age of the customer? What is going to be the gender of the customer? And how much salary he is or he is getting actually? Okay. And uh, how much loan amount it is going to be there? Loan amount. And how much duration of the loan amount? Uh, there are taking a lot of information. I'm not writing all those things actually, guys. A lot of information will be there. So whenever a customer applies a loan, they will collect all this information. They will first collect actually, guys. They'll collect all this kind of an information. First of all, there are going to be collecting all this kind of an information like age, gender, salary, amount, duration, something age 28, like gender is going to be male, salary is going to be 50K, loan amount is, let us say, 5 lakhs, duration is going to be, let us say, 48 months, et cetera, et cetera. And there is an another column is there, which is going to be something called as a status. That means what is the status of this customer loan account? He has paid the EMS promptly, so he is a non-defaulter. For example, a customer who didn't pay the promptly, he is going to be what we are going to call it as. He paid, let us say that 36 months is loan duration. After taking the loan for one year, they have paid the loan. After one year, they stopped paying the loans actually. They are called as a defaulters. So what is happening here is guys, anyone, any idea guys? Uh, how much percentage of defaulters will be there in a banking applications, guys? Any ideas? Any any assumption or anything like any idea about that? How much percentage of defaulters will be there in a banking? Yes. Any assumptions, guys? Can you guess it? Sir, they will be less as compared to non-defaulters. Uh, non Obviously, let us say that how much percentage it could be. It could be. 5 to 10 percent absolutely it may be somewhere around 5 to 10 percent or maybe some around 10 to 15 percent there is a defaulters will be there actually yes. generally defaulters will be there a bank no bank is running as of now even it may be any banks even in us also we have them so even the government is going to be very uh, even the banks are also very uh, hard in giving that particular even complete verification is done also in us also so many companies so many persons are going to be becomes defaulters actually. So let us say that we are having 10-15% of defaulters are there actually. But we we cannot assume, we cannot identify them. In real applications, we cannot really identify. But looking at this data, today we are giving a loan. Today only we cannot identify or we cannot identify him that he would become a defaulter or he would become a non-defaulter in the future. It's impossible to identify that. So today's his financial status is good because we know that the financial status is going to be changes over the time period. For example, today this person, let us take this example. He is a employee. Let us say that he has been employee actually. Okay. He is working a good salary. Let us say that he is earning, for example, a 1 lakh for a month. He is going to be 1 lakh per a month. He is going to be earning actually. Yes. Example, I'm talking about that. So he's having a good um, um, a good salary. He was working in a good company. So the bank has given some loan he has been given. Let us say that somewhere around 25 lakhs of loan he has been got, he has been given, depending on his particular current, whatever the salary. But what happens, we know them. 
let us say that over a time period, let us say that after one year of paying the EMIs, let us say that he has lost his job or he has been left his job. He was having some interest in business. He has been left his job. He has been left his job. So after he left the job, he has been went into some business and business was lost. Then automatically he was unable to pay the EMS actually. The banks cannot restrict. For example, if employees left leaving the company, the banks cannot restrict him saying that, sir, we have a bank loan. Don't allow him to leave the company. The banks cannot restrict him actually, isn't it? So financial status will change us. Financial status will change us actually over that time period. It may improve or it is going to be degrades also. So we cannot say that. So we cannot assume that today itself, we cannot identify whether the customer or whether the person is going to be a, a defaulter or a non-defaulter, we cannot identify him. So then in that cases, what we are going to do that? In the cases, what we are going to do that? We cannot identify. So obviously banks will have some defaulters. So 15, 10 to 15% defaulters is not, it may be a small number actually guys. If I give a loan to, for example, 1000 people, that means almost all 100 to 150 people are becoming defaulters. If you assume that on an average, each loan amount is 5 lakhs. Imagine that guys, how much loss to the particular company. Let us imagine that 5 lakhs to each customer. If I have such kind of an 100 customers are there, imagine that how much loss to that particular company in a particular year of time actually. So what the banks want to do is they want to identify. That means they want to, they have a lot of customers data with them. They have a lot of customers data with them actually guys. In the past, who are the defaulters? Who are the non-defaulters? We have the data with them. So what the banks will think is, can't you predict? That means, can't you have at least some assumption that this person is going to be becomes a defaulter. This person is going to be non-defaulter. So before giving a loan. These are all our past customers data. So nowadays, earlier we don't have a data, but nowadays a lot of data has been accumulated as for us. A lot of data is available with us. So now the banks, what they are doing it actually, guys, if you can understand this data or if you can analyze this particular data, understand, and it is going to be your can say analyze the data. Once if you analyze this data, the past customers data, you will get some kind of an insights. We are going to be getting some kind of an insights. We are going to get it actually, guys. We can get some kind of an insights. What do you mean to say insights? Insight is nothing but what do you understand from that particular data? So you may get some kind of an insights like who are going to be defaulters. If the age is between somewhere around 28 to 35 years of age, whenever the age is between 28 to 35, whenever the salary is going to be less than 40K, and whenever the loan amount is going to be more than, let us say, 5 lakhs, and whenever the duration is going to be less than 3 years or something like that, they are becoming defaulters. 80% chances that they are going to be defaulters actually. Let us say that is what we have been understood from the data. That is what we have been understood from the data actually, guys. So in that case, what we can do is, based on this particular understanding, whenever a new customer comes, Whenever a new customer comes, what we are going to do, you will try to find out is his characters are matching with this particular data. Whenever it is matching with this particular data, you can predict he could be a defaulter in the future. That's why don't give any loan or go for more and more verification. Just take care before giving a loan to this particular customer. Please take care. 80% chances that he is going to be a defaulter actually. Okay. So that is going to be what we are trying to understand from that past data. But problem here is data is not a small data as compared with the earlier. We have a very large volumes of data, large volumes of data, a lot, a lot of columns are there. A lot of features are going to be there actually. So the dimension is going to be very higher dimension data actually. So to analyze this kind of a data, what we are trying to do is guys, what we are trying to do is we are taking the help of some kind of a machines. What the point is to understand these huge volumes of data, huge volumes of data, we are taking the help of some kind of a machines. We are going to take it actually, guys. So give this data to the machines, give this data to the machines. Machines are capable to understand that particular data. And these are going to be the insights which machines are going to be finding it actually, guys. Maybe you'll get it out. Sir, can the machines can learn? 
Yes, absolutely, guys. Machines are capable to learn now. Up to now, whenever we go to any programming languages, guys, that means whenever we went to any programming languages. Okay. So why do you require a programming language? First of all, why do you require a programming language, guys? Whenever I say, why should I require a programming language means, hope you remembered. Machines cannot understand the human language. Machines can't understand the human language. That's why the machines has to be, the machines has to be instructed with some coding. Why do you require a programming language? Why? Because is machines cannot understand them. Machines cannot understand them actually. Being the machines cannot understand our human instructions, it is going to be nothing but we have to write a program. We have to write some kind of a program. We have to write it actually, guys. Right? We have to write a program. But now the machines, now the experts are saying that from all these years, from decades of time, we are writing some code. We are writing some logic. Okay. And why the machines has to be always, it should be instructed. So observe simple technique actually, guys. When I give the input as 10 comma 20, if you want to get 30 as an output, you have to write the code for addition of two numbers. We have to write something like an addition of two numbers. We have to write it. Now what the experts are saying it actually guys, what the experts are going to be saying is why should I from so many decades of time, we are writing all this particular code. We are going to be writing it actually. Why not the machines can understand? That means if I give 10 comma 20 as an input, if I want to get 30 as an output, why can't the machine can understand that it is coming by the addition of two numbers? It is going to be coming as an addition of the two numbers. So why the machines cannot study them? Why the machines cannot understand them? That is what we are talking about that. So don't think that this machine learning has been started in the recent years. It was successful in recent years actually, guys. But it was started around in 1959, it was started actually, guys. It was initially started by a computer expert who is an expert in gaming, who is working in IBM. His name is Arthur Samuel. I'll talk about this history later, actually, guys. In 1959, around the 1960s, it was started actually, guys. At that time only, this computer expert has started, uh, uh, started verifying. Why every time you have to write a program? Hope you understood, guys. Normally in a programming language, they will give the requirement. If input is 10 comma 20, if your output should be 30, you please write the logic for that. In machine learning, what we are saying is, if input is 10 comma 20 and output should be 30, the machine will identify that, how this 30 is coming from that particular input. It will decide whether you have to add the two numbers, whether you have to subtract the numbers, whether we have to multiply them or whether we have to divide them or something like that. Okay. So machines are going to identify that it is coming due to some addition of two numbers or it is coming due to the subtraction of the two numbers, something like that actually. So give the data to the machine. Machines are going to study the data. Okay. And it is going to get you some kind of an insights. Now, based on these insights, whenever the new, that means the future customers actually, whenever a new customer comes, so whether to give the loan or whether not to give a loan, so we can decide it actually, depending on some kind of a rules, what the machines has been studied about that. That is what we are trying to do it actually. Yes. That is what we are trying to do it actually. Yes. That is all about how we are going to be gets working with this particular, the concept called as a machine learning. So what is machine learning is all about guys. So giving the data to the machine, it is nothing but giving some data to the machine and we are going to make the machine to study the data actually, or we are going to make the machine to learn from that particular data action. Based on that, the machine will start learning whatever it has been learned or whatever it has been understood from the data. Based on that, we are going to be doing some kind of predictions what we are going to do it actually. It's all about predictive analysis. Understand the past and based on that, predict the future. If anybody asks you like whether today it will rain or not, or whether tomorrow it will rain or not. So will it rain tomorrow? For example, if anybody asks you, how do you analyze it actually? How do you do it actually? It's not like we are going to toss a coin and we are not going to say that if it is head, it is going to be something or if it is a tail, it is going to be something. So what happened in the past 10 days from the last part past 10 days, every day at some particular point of time, it was raining actually. 
from past 10 days it was raining today also it was raining so chances is that tomorrow also it will rain actually but how we are able to say it is depending on the past 10 days experience but for example if you ask a scientist the, the geologist or something if you ask about those uh, the whatever that particular department they will look at the whatever the satellite pictures and all these things they will say that but as a layman as a as a normally we are not able about the satellite pictures and all these things so we don't look at the satellite pictures and all these things from the last 10 days it was raining so chances is that tomorrow also 90% chances that it will rain actually so understanding the past and analyzing the past and predicting the future but here the machines are going to be taken the help actually guess machines are going to learning the data actually but sir how the machines can learn actually if machines are learning automatically by themselves then what is our work actually guys machines can't learn automatically by themselves guys there is the main powerfulness the main powerfulness is going to be the algorithms actually guys they are called as machine learning algorithms maybe while you are learning some languages like c c++ java you may be heard about something like a sorting algorithms okay same as it is here we are going to be learning something about what we can say about is guys we are going to be gets working about something called as the machine learning algorithms is what we are going to be using them guys we are going to be using some kind of an a machine learning algorithms what we are going to be using it actually we are going to be using a machine learning algorithms actually guys so here that means as part of our machine learning class or a data science class understanding all about this particular algorithms is only the main important topic actually guys it is going to be the main important topic is going to be understanding about this particular algorithms so we are going to learn all the kinds of algorithms we are going to learn it actually guys we are going to learn about all kinds of algorithms we are going to be learning it actually okay so that is what exactly we are going to be doing as of this particular application guys as of this application we are going to be doing it actually guys okay so what about the concept actually guys we are going to be studying about how these algorithms are going to be gets working how these particular algorithms are going to be working is what we are going to be trying to understand it actually guys okay so simply it is not going to be learning a programming language or it is not going to be learning any tool we are not going to be learning it actually guys main important is we are going to learning about some kind of an algorithms so how the machine will learn machine can't learn it independently by itself it is going to learn with the help of some kind of an algorithms it is going to learn so what are those particular algorithms how that particular algorithms will work what is the maths and stats behind that particular algorithms that is what we are going to mainly we are going to study in this particular class not only that actually guys there are multiple skills are going to be required actually technical aspects i will discuss it in the next class guys what are the technical aspects i'll tell you in the next class but mainly in our classroom training in our class in our sessions we are going to learn all about this particular algorithms only guys there are different algorithms like decision tree algorithm something like we are having something called as an knn uh, we have navi bayes we have random forest these are all some kind of an algorithms actually guys just for a quick understanding i can tell you you can just go online and you can search about what are going to be machine learning algorithms actually guys you simply say what are going to be machine learning algorithms so mainly you should be an expertise in them actually guys mainly you have to be familiar with this kind of an algorithms actually okay don't worry about that they will talk about 11 15 don't count them we are going to be having some kind of an algorithms what we are having it actually just an example guys just i'm showing you some kind of an online resources i'm going to tell you so top 10 machine learning algorithms for beginners actually so we have a different types of algorithms like you can see them like as i told you know decision tree knn which is going to be k nearest neighbor algorithm which is going to be linear regression logistic regression svm support vector machines random forest dimensionality reductions gradient boosting and ada boosting algorithms these are going to be some of the algorithms every algorithm is going to works by using some kind of an what we can say is some mathematical concept will be there so we have to study about those particular mathematical concepts actually guys so that is what i am going to explain 
as part of our training, our actual, the main training curriculum, we are going to be discussing about that. But to implement this particular concepts of machine learning, we have to use some kind of a language we have to use, isn't it? We have to use some kind of a language we have to use. So which language we are going to learn? So to implement this machine learning, guys, mainly popularly, we have two languages are there. Anyone guess which, which languages are mostly used for popularly for machine learning? So Python and R. Yes, absolutely. It is going to be Python and R actually, guys. So don't think that Python, Linux, sir, anyhow, again, you came to programming language. No, you cannot treat the Python and R as a programming language, guys. We don't write any like a lengthy programs like what we write it in Java or whatever we are going to write it in other languages. We don't do them actually, guys. It's a learning is very, very simple. Python is a very simple language, guys. A very simple language and very easy language it is going to be. So as part of our course curriculum, we are going to be learning both Python and R. End to end, I am the only fact, the only trainer, guys. Okay, I'm I'm an expert in Python as well as an expert in R. Expert in Python or R means I'm not a Python expert. To implement machine learning, whatever the Python that is required, in that I was an expert with that. That's it. Up to my scope and my knowledge is only up to the data science, AI, machine learning concepts only if we implement them. So whatever the Python concepts that are required for our concepts, up to that extent, I'm going to teach you guys. I was an expert in that. And also an expert in the R language also. Actually, I started my data science with R initially in 2017. Initially, I started in R and I then I moved to Python actually, guys. So most of the people who, start, who starts with Python, they can't become an expert in R because they don't like to learn the R. It's a little bit difficult, I guess. Only 10% people will be there who are an expert on Python and R. Remaining 90% people, either they may be expert in Python or expert in R. But experting in both Python and R is going to be a very few people will be there. So I was one of the expert guys where I can teach you both. I can work with both Python as well as I can work with the R language also. Both of them, I'm going to be working with them. I'll use some topics in R, some topics. Most of the topics, I do it in Python only, guys. But some of the topics I'm going to teach you, it's not just like an outline of the R. We'll go a little bit in depth into the R language, guys. Almost all somewhere around 10 to 15 days, actually, guys. Almost two weeks of time. Almost all two weeks, we are going to be spending on the R language. We are going to do that, actually. Two weeks. It is very quite similar to the Python only, guys. Whatever the implementations we have been done in Python, all implementations, we can do it as part of the R language, what we can do it. So I'll show you all that kind of a skills, guys. All that skills. Whatever you have been done in Python, same skill we are also going to be doing in our language also, we are going to be doing it actually. That's not a uh, problem in that. Okay. So that is going to be one of the um, programming language or scripting language what we have to learn. And mainly we are going to learn um, with respect to the Python and R only we are going to learn, guys. Mainly we are going to learn with machine learning. Our main topics, I'll, I'll, share, I'll share you my course curriculum also, guys. Machine learning and deep learning and which is going to be nothing but NLP. These are all going to be the main important core concepts. We are going to learn it actually, guys. In depth about them. Machine learning from end to end, we are going to learn it actually, guys. Deep learning and NLP also. At least we are going to cover the major concepts of NLPs and deep learning concepts. We are going to learn it actually. And along with that, we are also going to learn about a big data systems. As I told you, no, it is going to be big data systems also. We are going to work with them which is going to be Spark. Even I was a specialist in Spark also, actually, guys. So nowadays, uh, you are hearing about a course, actually, guys. They are talking it as an Azure Databricks. So the name is, so many people does not know about this, actually, guys. The things that Azure Databricks, ADB, there are going to be gets calling it as, actually. Azure Databricks is nothing but, it is working with the Spark, actually, guys. It's actually Databricks integrated with the Azure. It is not a Microsoft product, actually, guys. It's a Databricks is actually a product. It's not a product actually, guys. It's a platform which was created by Spark community. They integrated this Databricks into Azure as well as it has been integrated with Amazon or it has been integrated with the cloud. You can work with any one of them. So Databricks is integrated with Azure as well as Amazon as well as cloud. 
I am going to be working with the type of a big data systems. A little bit, a little bit introduction to Hadoop. Okay, MapReduce programming, some kind of fan hive or some kind of fan pig and some scoop. Okay, these are all some kind of an Hadoop frameworks actually, guys. A little bit introduction with them and we are going to be getting working with the Spark actually. So don't think that we require some kind of an Azure account or something like that. It's not required, guys, because from the Databricks, we have a community edition is there. Uh, I'll tell you guys, later I'll tell you. Community means it's a free account actually. So this is actually Databricks actually, guys. If you want, you can go to the databricks.com. Go to databricks.com actually, guys. This is actually the databricks.com. So this Databricks only, guys, it will be integrated with your Azure account. If you go to the Azure account, if I just go to, you can open, you, you can open your Azure account actually, guys. It's not a big problem, actually. Just go to the Azure account. There you will be having some different products are there and go to the analytics, you can see it actually, yes. Can you see? Design the AI with application Spark-based analytics. It is that same Databricks only, the same Databricks, which was integrated with the cloud technology, which was integrated with the cloud technology. Same thing, I can do it here, as well as same thing, I can do it here. But if you want to do it in Azure, you have to pay some money. Whenever you want to work here, we don't require to pay any money because here we are having some kind of a community edition is going to be there. We'll work with the community edition. We'll work with the community edition is what we are going to be it's working with them actually, guys. Okay, so that is what I am going to be talking about that. So learning a data science, I told you, no, it's not only just to know about a Python or something like that, it's not sufficient. Even I'm also going to be an expert in Power BI tool. So even I'm going to teach you Power BI, it's not in depth about them, guys. But with some basic knowledge of whatever we have the skills, you can learn the Power BI very easily. Hardly, maybe somewhere around seven days actually, guys. One week will be for Power BI. Okay, and big data systems are going to be somewhere around two weeks we are going to be working on the big data systems. Maybe two weeks we are going to be guys working. Something like that. But main concepts are going to be, guys, machine learning, deep learning, and NLP. These are the main topics we have to be working with them, guys. So machine learning will take somewhere around four to six weeks. It will take it actually, guys. Even deep learning is also going to take somewhere around four to six weeks. It will take it. NLP will take another two more weeks. It is going to take. So all this is going to be added up actually, guys. Okay. But you have to spare some time actually, guys. It is not just like a two months course. Okay. 45 days. Nowadays, I can see, guys, this uh, data breaks, uh, Azure Data Factory, ADF, ADVs. All these are saying that 45 days courses are there, but this will take somewhere around four to five months. It is going to take it actually, guys. That means almost all somewhere around 20 weeks. It is going to take it almost all 20 to 22 weeks. It will take it actually, guys. So that much vast con concepts are going to be there. As I told you, you know, machine learning four to six weeks, deep learning another four to six weeks. NLP is going to be two weeks. Hadoop is going to be another two weeks. Power Bay is one week. R and Python, R language is going to be another two weeks. Prerequisites another two weeks. So hardly it is going to be somewhere around, which is going to be somewhere around 20 to 22 weeks. It is going to take it actually. It's a little bit a time taking course actually. But the advantage is guys, we are having the option for multiple roles because you can also become a Spark expert here. You can become a Power BI expert here. You can apply the jobs related to machine learning. You can apply the jobs related to deep learning. We are having a job opportunities to NLP. NLP is the currently the hot jobs actually, guys. NLP is having a huge requirements as of now. You can go to nowkri.com and you can check it out. NLP engineers. So the role is going to be what we are going to call it as NLP engineers actually. Guys. You can just go to that NLP engineering and you can check for the jobs. All are the latest jobs actually, guys. All of them are going to be the latest jobs only. Let me check it out once. NLP engineer actually, guys. NLP developer or NLP engineer, what we can call them as. So what is NLP actually, guys? It's a natural language processing. It is what we are going to call it as a natural language processing, what we are going to be gets talking about them. Okay. Now, if you can observe carefully, guys, these are going to be the latest jobs actually, guys. All, all these things you can see one day ago, Two day, one day ago. Okay. You can see it actually. Six days ago is what we can see. Okay. 
So all of them are going to be some kind of a latest jobs only. Just let's keep them 30, um, 30 plus days of time. But whatever the latest jobs we are having it actually, guys. Whatever the latest jobs we are going to be having it actually. So if you just filter them, you can find it off. So all of them are going to be just as hardly it is going to be six days ago. Okay, six days ago, one day ago, what we can see it actually, guys. It's an, something like an, which is going to be the terms we can see it actually. What are the terms we can see it actually, guys? NLP, Python, Big Data Frameworks, SQL, NoSQL, something like that. NLP, Machine Learning, Python, TensorFlow, PyTorch. These are going to be some kind of fun. So you can see Pune, immediate opening is going to be there on NLP related concepts. What the point, guys? So these are going to be some of the skills what we have it actually. So instead of learning only one single technology, and applying the jobs only based on the single technology, you are having a multiple skills. We are going to be having it actually. Yes, we have a multiple skills are there. Okay. So you can just apply for different, different roles. We have a multiple opportunities are there. Work as a machine learning engineer, go for a deep learning engineer, NLP, or even we can go for a, uh, like, which is going to be big data engineer or a uh, spark framework or a spark expert or a spark engineer. We can call them as. Okay, you cannot go to um, Azure actually. It's an Azure only. We are going to learn some kind of a skills. And even if you want, you can go for a Power BI tool. You can learn the things more and more. You can learn the things on the Power BI and you can learn the things actually. I'll tell you like what are the main concepts you have to learn remaining. You can just expand them and explore them and we can get a more and more expertise on that. Because by this time only, it is going to be four to five months of time. So automatically it will take, if you want to learn about more and more, it will take a lot of time. It is going to take it actually. Yes. Okay. So that is an idea about just then, an idea about like what is we are going to be doing in data science guys. So it is going to be understanding the past data and based on that, we are going to be predicting the future actually. Okay. So for that, we have a different skills are required like machine learning, deep learning, NLP, big data systems, Power BI, Python, R, Okay, these are some of the techniques and skills that are going to be gets required actually. As we said that it is an interdisciplinary field actually guys. Learning not only just one skill and just going ahead is not possible. Multiple skills are going to be required actually. Why do you require multiple skills? We'll look into that particular discussion in the tomorrow's class guys. Okay, so just for today, we'll end up the session for today guys. Okay, so I can spare another 10, 15 minutes of time as, as you require, no problem. So if you have any questions from your side, feel free to discuss with me guys. Okay. Any technical aspects or any non-technical aspects, you can just discuss with me guys. If you have any questions regarding the data science and all these things, right. Go ahead guys. If you have any questions. So we'll be having uh, machine learning projects also in this course. <laughs> yeah. See, <laughs> the first thing is going to be, uh, the first thing is going to be nothing but see, Learning this machine learning is not like um, learning with some small, small samples of data, two records, three records, five records. We cannot do it, guys. So for every machine learning example, we have to take some kind of a real data sets. We are going to take it actually. Okay. So you can say every example which we do it in machine learning is going to be some kind of an what we can say that some kind of an POC actually, some kind of a project we can say that actually. Yes, absolutely to answer your question, absolutely we'll be having one project on that. But apart from that, each topic you are going to learn is going to be like a project on because I am not going to work. We are not going to work with employees data, departments data, customers data. We can't work with that kind of a data. Guys. We don't work with that kind of a data. Actually, we are going to work with some kind of a real data sets. They are real data sets. There are public data sets, guys. Public data sets means which are available for public. Anybody can access this particular data actually, guys. Like for example, just now we are talking about a bank's data actually, guys. So we have a bank data is there. Multiple bank datas are there with us. I have a data called as an, which is going to be credit or CSV file. It, it's not like an, uh, we made the data actually, guys. How much data you can make it manually, guys? 100 records, 200 records, we can make it. But see the data actually, guys how much data it is going to be, we are having it actually. So this is the data actually, guys, a real data set actually. It's a real data set only, which is going to be publicly available. Anybody can access this data. Real data set contributed by real-time experts, 
so that anybody can access this data actually. See guys, how many columns of data we have? It is containing somewhere around 21 columns of data actually. It is containing somewhere around 21 columns of data and having somewhere around 1000 records of the data. So working with this data, we are going to be doing this. So absolutely as part of your question, yes, we'll be having a project will be there. Apart from that, every example we'll see practically is going to be, we'll work with this kind of a data sets guys, not just by taking some employees data, departments data, customers data. We don't do that kind of an examples. Okay, fine. <clears throat> Yes. Um, yes. Yes. Srikanth, as I told you, know, it is not about your, uh, what is your past. <laughs> okay. How much is your experience does not matter. Do you have any prior knowledge of any programming Srikanth? Okay. That is sufficient. That is sufficient. With that knowledge, we can learn Python. It's not all about any programming part actually. Guys. Data science is not about programming. As I told you, know, some kind of a skill some kind of a technique I'll explain them to implement the technique. We are going to use as this programming languages, but you have to understand only the technique only. We have to understand it actually. Okay. So understanding about the technique is important, but implementation is going to be very easy actually. Okay. Fine. Shrikant. Yeah, guys. Hi, sir. Good morning. Is there any prerequisites and how many classes we have per week? Yes. Ajit. Um, it is going to be six days a week, guys. Okay. Uh, we cannot have five days a week because you know that how much was syllabus is going to be there. So even if we take a six days a week also, it is going to be taking more and more time. So it is a six days a week. Uh, we give off on Sunday, actually, guys. Sunday is an off. And um, uh, how many hours of time? Uh, it is going to be one hour, 15 minutes will be there for the class timing, guys. One hour, 15 minutes is the time. It's a class timing, actually. One hour, one and a half. It won't be one and a half hour, but one hour, 15 minutes is going to be the class duration. Like that, you will be having, which is going to be uh, six days a week. We are going to be having the classes actually. Okay, fine. Right. Sir, I'm from Sundar. I'm from 2017 Pastor with no experience in IT area. A gap, can I get a job? Yes, absolutely. You can get a job actually. It's not an, I told you now guys, it's not about programming. It is going to be just like a research. You have to research with the data. We have to research with the data actually. So if you have that kind of a skill to work with the data, that is sufficient. You can just go ahead and you can do some analytics on that particular data. All about working with the data only guys. No programming language, no uh, computer skills, nothing is going to be required. If you have some understanding, if you have the skills to understand the data, that is sufficient to understand these particular applications. Okay. So absolutely, without having some experience also, we can put it, but being you are 2017 passed out and already we are, we are almost into 2023, uh, it is going to be almost all, which is six years of time. So we cannot put a six gap of six years, but please, you have to fill up at least three years. You have to fill up with some fake experience and we have to do that. Okay. Yes, placement assistance will be there as well as placement support will be there from my side, but that is go not going to be, we don't have any. Uh, completely like an uh, uh, guaranteed placements are not there, but placement assistance and placement support will be there. Whatever the support you require, whatever the assistance is going to be required, I'm going to give you guys. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Ajit, uh, every day to day, you will be getting the recording sessions as well as whatever the notes I'm writing here, whatever the notes I'm writing here, as well as whatever the code I'm going to write it, everything we are going to write it actually. We'll get, we'll, we'll get the recording videos. Okay. Yes. Sundar skill is going to be important. Isn't it? We don't here. Python is a very simple skill only guys. Python is going to be a simple skill only. Just, uh, just to uh, get some idea I'm talking about. Don't worry. Just uh, in evening 8 o'clock, 8 PM batch, we started with the first machine learning algorithm guys. I started with my first machine learning algorithm in the evening 6 PM batch. I have been started actually guys. Yesterday only it has been got done. This one. Just have a look at the code once. Uh, books will be having, will be having a lot of books are there. Okay. <laughs> Nowadays, nobody is reading the books actually, guys. We are depending on the blogs only. We are depending on the blogs. I'll guide you. I'll tell you some few blogs I'm going to tell you. Like one is going to be towards datascience.com. So this is going to be one of the online resources, which is best actually, guys. 
all which is going to be the towards the data science.com everything is going to be towards the data science.com and we have an another uh, repository called as an kaggle is there sorry it's a kaggle we are having something like an kaggle is going to be there so kaggle is one repository so there we can save your notebooks we can make any repositories okay these are my notebooks actually guys these are my notebooks actually okay so we are going to be having some kind of a notebooks we can write them we can maintain all the repositories and all these things we can maintain it actually okay so like this we can work with them this is my page actually guys you can see my name sri v vamsi krishna guttula and this is going to be my uh, whatever that particular uh, the page and my repository is going to be gets maintained actually okay so something like that we have some different different i told you know public data sets are available so these are all public data sets actually guys so if you want to know about public data sets we are having it actually like whatever the data analyzing the customer spending habits are there you can get the data you can get some kind of a lot of data is there with us guys you can get that particular data analyze them and what whatever you want we can work with them you see the picture also actually guys so he is looking like a scientist he is having a long hair so looking you know how the scientist will be there no guys okay so he is having a long hair actually and he is working with the data only you know you can see that the picture is also is just telling the same thing actually guys this is going to be uh, the kaggle and we have a different types of resources are there will use as that kind of a resources for our implementations right shrikant right guys anyone guys any more questions any any technical questions i'm expecting guys it's not like whether you do a project or not i'm expecting any like kind of a technical knowledge or technical questions if so we have... will be using jupyter notebook yes absolutely these are all yeah. jupyter notebooks only for for python we use jupyter notebooks for r we use as r studio we are going to use okay right guys any more questions guys if we have any will there be any projects yes, yes. Uh, there will be yeah yeah, will yeah. Be yeah we will be doing a projects also as i told you know every example is going to be like a project only for us it's not like uh, you can see this actually i didn't scroll it actually this is the recent one which we have been got done guys so see different skills are required uh, i think you know this skill actually guys uh, what do you call this skill actually guys data scatter plot scatter okay. plot uh, what is the skill is called as what is the skill uh, visualization okay. visualization it's going to be some kind of a data visualization we are going to do it actually guys okay and this is going to be like what our machine has been learned see guys this is what my machine has been learned actually guys i didn't written any functional code just i given the data and ask my machine to learn it actually machine has been learned so this is the output of that particular machine normally any how it is coming nobody can understand that maybe okay, nobody means who has non data science people cannot understand but this picture anybody can understand it actually guys this picture anybody can understand it you can see something like if the weight is less than or equal to 138 it is an orange if weight is more than 138 what we have to do you can understand that kind of an the tree that is a decision tree actually guys that is how my decision tree will be coming actually it is an algorithm a very popular algorithm in the machine learning concepts okay so we learn all these skills actually and then finally we go for the machine learning implementation so every day class notes will be coming like this actually guys can you see like every day 8 pm 8:30 pm uh, 8 pm is there 9 am is there 7 am is there okay we have the classes actually 9:30 pm also we have a class actually so yesterday is 9:30 pm what class we have been got discussed so this is an yesterday's class actually yes so yesterday i started with uh, random number generations in python so it is going to be by using a numpy library so it is going to be some kind of a random number generations actually guys how do you generate some random numbers how to reshape them uh, those are the skills we have been got learning about that these are all some kind of a prerequisites to learn about the machine learning right okay so don't worry about them just to get some idea i'm talking about them actually guys okay fine any others guys any other questions fine guys uh, let's end up the session for today guys so tomorrow same time same link guys at 8:30 am so tomorrow we'll connect at the same time guys so hope i'll see you all of you in the tomorrow's class and have a nice day have a nice day guys <clears throat>
Thank so you. I'm ending the session, guys. Thank you all of you for attending the session. Guys. Thank you all of you once again. Yeah. Hi. Um, good morning, all of you guys. Uh, this is Vamshi here. Uh, I was a trainer for uh, the data science related technologies. Uh, hope all of you can hear me, guys. Uh, can anyone, can you please confirm is a audible? Yes, you are audible. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, guys. So guys, um, today is the, the first session for you. Um, I'll tell you about that. Actually, I'll tell you about our program and all these things I'll tell you. But anyhow, for you guys, uh, it is going to be the first session for you. So I just want to take a couple of classes, actually, guys, a couple of classes means maybe a three days. I want to take some kind of a demo sessions. So where I'm going to introduce something about like what is data science? Why do you require that means what the clients are expecting from these data science related technologies? So what are the main important concepts which we have to learn the main areas which we have to concentrate about that? Uh, just before going to this guys, uh, just before starting with that, I just want to know how much extent uh, you know about what is data science. Uh, I'm not expecting anything like uh, you should be answering it correctly. What do you ex what you know about a data science? or what you are trying to understand what is about the data science. Uh, can anyone guys, anyone, can you come please come forward and you can uh, have a small points of discussion, anyone? Yes, sir. Actually data science is a like multidisciplinary field where we like use multiple tech stack to solve a particular business pro uh, problem, which can involve cloud uh, mm -hmm. statistics and Python as a programming language. Mm -hmm. And then okay. we can, yeah. Okay. Any core areas of this data science? Like uh, what are the different concepts which you have to learn in this data science? Yes, yeah, a machine learning yes. we have to learn okay, for okay. implementing. Okay, yeah. fine. Yes, absolutely. I guess the terms because yeah, guys. Nowadays, really, uh, it has been a, becoming a common uh, knowledge to everyone. Actually, everybody has to know about this data science. So like in some earlier days, they used to talk about something about uh, C language, how C language should be commonly learned by everybody. Nowadays, independent of, independent of whether you are in, um, whether you are from bachelors or whether you are from engineering or whether you are from a BCom or it may be a MBA or even it may be a civil engineer, whether it may be anybody. Nowadays, it is becoming a common skill actually, guys. In coming future, nowadays, even you have been, you may have seen if you have been uh, uh, as a coming as a fresh graduate from your colleges. So whenever they are conducting some kind of and whenever there is a some kind of an campus recruitment is going on. So as part of their recruitment test also, they are adding some skills related to the data analysis. Okay, some kind of an data analysis questions or some kind of an uh, uh, the problems like what is going to be deep learning, they're adding some kind of a questions to them actually. To just test to, just to test it, how much extent you are aware about this particular data science concept actually. So it has been became a common skill actually. It Everybody has to, nowadays, everybody has to have this particular knowledge about that because everywhere we are working with the data guys. Everywhere we are working with the data. It's not only that, Data means only banks will have a data. Now it is not only banks. Everywhere, everywhere we are going to be having a data. Everywhere we are having a data. Even for example, for, uh, for example, let us talk about a mechanical engineer. So a mechanical engineer is going to work with the machines. Nowadays, everything has been become automated. At how much speed that particular machine is rotating, how much torque it is generating, how much input the input power it is taking actually. Something like that everywhere we are working about a data so there is some data generated by the machines actually so whenever a machine is going to be running for example if i talk about uh, for example some kind of an uh, the flights whenever the flights will travel there are going to generate a lot of data for every one hour of travel it is going to generate some kind of a terabytes of data is going to be generated actually guys okay so imagine that within six months of time how much data it is going to be generating so we are not talking about, so as, as, as part of our data science, we are not bothered about how the data storage is there. We are not talking about the data storage actually, guys. Where it is stored, how it will be stored, 
we don't talk about the data storages that will be taken care by the data engineers uh, or it may be a database experts those people are going to be taking about that even we are not talking about how to process the data actually guys which is going to be data processing that is also we are not talking about that so storage of data processing of data these are going to be generally done by the role called as which is going to be what we are generally calling it as that which is going to be data engineers now data engineering also has been became a very uh, a popular role actually guys which is having a very huge demand as of now so coming to the data storages you should be knowing about some kind of a systems like uh, any anything like which is going to be database systems we have to talk about or some kind of an cloud storages we have to talk about or some kind of a big data systems we have to talk about that coming to data processing also we have to learn something about big data systems okay using big data you can store as well as we can process the data nowadays one of the very popular framework which are going to be gets working for data processing is going to be a spark actually guys that is going to be what the data engineering roles are going to be doing it actually guys there are data engineering roles actually but coming to our role it is going to be what we are going to call it as a data science role actually guys it is going to be data science role actually so data science is going to be nothing but we are not interested to learn about how to store the data or how to process the data our main role is to guys data science is all about doing some kind of an analysis a data analysis or what we can say that it is going to be understanding the data actually then you may get a doubt sir if it is becoming only or talking about analysis then why don't you call it as a data analyst why you are calling it as a data science we are going to call about that data analysis means it is only all about understanding the data but data science is not only only about analyzing the data or understanding the data based on this analysis the data you can do some kind of an predictions also what we can do it actually guys we can do some kind of a predictions what we are going to be doing it actually so understand the data analyze your data and based on that we are going to be doing some kind of a predictions so what has been happened in the past analyze it what could happen in the future that is what we are going to be doing as part of this particular data science as uh, somebody has been said i didn't remember your name i didn't see your name so somebody said that it is going to be one of an interdisciplinary field why it is called as an interdisciplinary field means it is not like learning a single skill or a learning a single technology and we cannot say that i can enter into data science learning a data science is all about learning some different different skills we have to learn it actually different different skills inside that data analysis is going to be one skill actually guys it is only one skill i am not saying that if you learn a data analysis you are going to become a data scientist so the guys who are working on data science is going to be what we are going to call them as a data scientist we are going to call them as actually but it's not only one skill of analysis there are multiple skills are that are going to be gets required actually guys here just to make you understand this particular concept to analyze this particular data we are going to be taking some help of the machines actually guys machine means it is nothing but it is not any machine means it is not going to be something like an a mechanical device or something like that machine means it is your computer machine means it is going to be nothing but it is your computer actually guys so what we are going to do is we are going to take the help of the machines now what the machines are saying is you give me the data i am going to analyze and i am going to understand the data so machines are saying that see guys analysis is nothing but what we are going to do that what we are going to do that somebody has given the data to us and we are going to analyze that particular data actually guys we are just analyzing the data actually but here the main skill is going to be nothing but guys we are taking the help of the machines machines are going to start machines are capable to learn from the data actually so that particular technique is nothing but what we are going to call it as an a machine learning actually guys actually data science contains so many other skills are going to be required 
So, but if you want to understand all the other skills, first of all, we have to understand what do you mean to say about a data science? What is meaning of a machine learning actually? So learning about data science is going to be, as I told you, you know, there are multiple skills are going to be there, which we are going to study them later, which we are going to study them later, actually, guys. As I told you, you know, I'm going to take somewhere around three days of demos. I'll take it actually. <clears throat> and then if you attend that particular three demo classes, then you are going to understand it. Like, what do you mean to say data science? What is machine learning? All these things, it will take some time, actually, I guess. Just within one day, you cannot completely understand what do you mean to say data science, actually. Just give me a second, guys. Just give me a second. Yeah. So then let us make it understand. Let us take some two classes, actually, guys, to make you understand what do you mean to say about a machine learning, actually. So the name itself is suggesting actually, guys. The name itself is suggesting saying that machine learning actually. What do you mean to say machine learning means? Machines are going to learn from the data. They are going to learn them actually, guys. So what the machines are saying is, whenever you are trying to analyze your data, instead of you doing the analysis, you give the data to us. You give the data to us. Machines are going to learn by, by themselves. We are going to learn from them and we are going to tell you what is the data, how is the data. Based on that, we can do some kind of a predictions. So machine learning is all about giving the data to the machine, guys. Giving the data to the machine and machine is going to learn the data. That is what it has been learned is what we are going to call it as insights. Based on that insights, we can do some kind of a predictions actually. Once again, guys, machine learning is going to be nothing but the task is. Let me tell you about what is data science later, guys. For the time being, I'm just going to tell you about what is going to be about a machine learning first of all. After that, we'll discuss about the remaining points actually. Remaining things, we are going to discuss it later actually. Guys. So give the data to the machine. Machine is going to study the data. And it is going to get some kind of an insights. Based on that particular insights, we can do some kind of a predictions actually, guys. That is what the simple machine learning talks about. That. So don't think that, sir, if everything is done by the machine, then what is going to be our work actually, guys? What is going to be our work? We'll discuss it, guys. We'll discuss it. Okay. Yes. Uh, I think uh, who has been uh, anyone, guys? Can you tell me some simple use case of machine learning in the real applications, guys? Anyone? One small use case, anyone? Bank fraud detection. Okay, bank fraud detections. Okay. Okay, guys. I'll tell you in the easiest way. I'm going to tell you about a small example, but I'm not taking a bank fraud detection. Okay, it is also going to come under the fraud detection only, but fraud means there are two things actually, guys. A transaction is going to be a fraud transaction. That is going to be, we know that. Or an insurance company, we call them as a fraud claims, we are going to call it as. That means the claim has been, is not occurred actually, but it has been fraud. That means it is going to be wrongly. They have been said that we have to claim this particular insurance. That is going to be nothing but a kind of an, a, flaws, a false claims or which is going to be a false claims, what we are going to call it as. Okay. In the easiest way, I'll tell you the example guys. Okay. So please try to interact too guys. Uh, just don't be uh, dumb. Uh, you try to just interact with me so that it good. It is an online class. So why we have been, uh, why you have been opted for the online classes actually guys, it is due to actually we have started initially due to the COVID restrictions we have been started. But after the COVID restrictions has been, after the COVID restrictions has been relaxed. So guys are the people, the participants, I think you, all of you, we are based in Hyderabad. But I think so all of you guys are not from Hyderabad, maybe maximum 80% or six, at least 70, 60%, you are going to be out of Hyderabad actually. So that really this COVID has brought a completely a change in the way we are, uh, this trainings has been became a completely change. So now guys are connecting not only from all over the India. So all over the world, we are connecting actually guys, even some guys are there from, from Denmark. Okay. Some, somebody has going to be from Netherlands. We have some participants are there. So it has been brought an opportunity to connect, to create a platform, which are going to be gets connecting actually. So. It, it is not a kind of a video training. It is a live instructor-led class only. So please be interactive actually, guys. Okay. 
Let us talk about a banking example. I'm taking a same banking example as somebody has suggested. Let us talk about an example of a loans department, actually, yes, loans department. So what is a loans department will do in a bank is, basically, you know that they will uh, give the loans to the customers. Not only giving the loans, they have to verify whether the customers are paying the loans promptly or not. So simply their responsibility is not only just to give the loans. So customer applied the loan and just not only giving the loans. So we have to verify, we have to have a complete observation about whether the customers are paying the EMS promptly or not. We know them. Who are not paying the EMS promptly, they are called as defaulters. We don't call them as frauders. Fraud means there are different cases. Fraud means who is going to uh, do some, uh, that means they will give some kind of a fraud documents or a wrong documents or something like that. They will get a loan in a different way. Okay, in a wrong way, if we get the claims, that is going to be what we can call it as fraud. We are not frauders actually. Defaulters and non-defaulters, we are going to call them as actually. Who are defaulters? Who are non-defaulters? We know them. Defaulters are nothing but who does not pay the EMS promptly. And non-defaulters are nothing but who is going to pay the EMS promptly. Those, those are called as defaulters and non-defaulters. Now, the main, the main target here is the banks are giving the loans. The banks are giving the loans, but how they are giving the loans? They are collecting some lot of information, like what is the age of the customer? What is going to be the gender of the customer? And how much salary he is or he is getting actually? Okay. And uh, how much loan amount it is going to be there? Loan amount. And how much duration of the loan amount? Uh, there are taking a lot of information. I'm not writing all those things actually, guys. A lot of information will be there. So whenever a customer applies a loan, they will collect all this information. They will first collect actually, guys. They'll collect all this kind of an information. First of all, there are going to be collecting all this kind of an information like age, gender, salary, amount, duration. Something age 28, like gender is going to be male. Salary is going to be 50K. Loan amount is, let us say, 5 lakhs. Duration is going to be, let us say, 48 months, etc., etc. And there is an another column is there, which is going to be something called as a status. That means what is the status of this customer loan account? He has paid the EMS promptly, so he is a non-defaulter. For example, a customer who didn't pay the promptly, he is going to be what we are going to call it as. He paid, let us say that 36 months is loan duration. After taking the loan for one year, they have paid the loan. After one year, they stopped paying the loans actually. They are called as a defaulters. So what is happening here is, guys, anyone, any idea, guys, uh, how much percentage of defaulters will be there in a banking applications, guys? Any ideas? Any any assumption or anything like, any idea about that? How much percentage of defaulters will be there in a banking? Yes. Any assumptions, guys? Can you guess it? Sir, they will be less as compared to non-defaulters. Uh, Non-default, obviously. Let us say that how much percentage it could be. It could be. Five to ten percent. Absolutely, it may be somewhere around five to ten percent, or maybe some around ten to fifteen percent. There is a defaulters will be there actually. Yes, generally defaulters will be there. A bank, no bank is running as of now. Even it may be any banks. Even in US also we have them. So even the government is going to be very. Uh, even the banks are also very uh, hard in giving that particular. Even complete verification is done also in US also. So many companies, so many persons are going to be becomes defaulters actually. So let us say that we are having 10, 15% of defaulters are there actually. But we, we cannot assume, we cannot identify them in real applications. We cannot really identify, but looking at this data today, we are giving a loan today only we cannot identify or we cannot identify him that he would become a defaulter or he would become a non-defaulter in the future. It's impossible to identify that. So today's his financial status is good because we know that the financial status is going to be changes over the time period. For example, today this person, let us take this example. He is a employee. Let us say that he has been employee actually. Okay. He is working a good salary. Let us say that he is earning, for example, a one lakh for a month. He is going to be one lakh per a month. He is going to be earning actually. Yes. Example, I'm talking about that. So he's having a good um, um, a good salary. He was working in a good company. So the bank has given some loan he has been given. Let us say that somewhere around 
25 lakhs of loan he has been got he has been given depending on his particular current whatever the salary but what happens we know them let us say that over a time period let us say that after one year of paying the emis let us say that he has lost his job or he has been left his job he was having some interest in business he has been left his job he has been left his job so after he left the job he has been went into some business and business was lost then automatically he was unable to pay the ems actually the banks cannot restrict for example if employee is left leaving the company the banks cannot restrict him saying that sir we have a bank loan don't allow him to leave the company the banks cannot restrict him actually isn't it so financial status will change us financial status will change us actually over the time period it may improve or it is going to be degrades also so we cannot say that so we cannot assume that today itself we cannot identify whether the customer or whether the person is going to be a, a defaulter or a non defaulter we cannot identify him so then in that cases what we are going to do that in that cases what we are going to do that we cannot identify so obviously banks will have some defaulters so 15 10 to 15% defaulters is not it may be a small number actually guys if i give a loan to for example 1000 people that means almost all 100 to 150 people are becoming defaulters if you assume that on an average each loan amount is 5 lakhs imagine that guys how much loss to the particular company let us imagine that 5 lakhs to each customer if i have such kind of an 100 customers are there imagine that how much loss to that particular company in a particular year of time actually so what the banks want to do is they want to identify that means they want to they have a lot of customers data with them they have a lot of customers data with them actually guys in the past who are the defaulters who are the non defaulters we have the data with them so what the banks will think is can't you predict that means can't you have at least some assumption that this person is going to be becomes a defaulter this person is going to be non defaulter so before giving a loan these are all our past customers data so nowadays earlier we don't have a data but nowadays a lot of data has been accumulated as for us a lot of data is available with us so now the banks what they are doing it actually guys if you can understand this data or if you can analyze this particular data understand and it is going to be your can say analyze the data once if you analyze this data the past customers data you will get some kind of an insights we are going to be getting some kind of an insights we are going to get it actually guys we can get some kind of an insights what do you mean this an insights insight is nothing but what do you understand from that particular data so you may get some kind of an insights like who are going to be defaulters if the age is between somewhere around 28 to 35 years of age whenever the age is between 28 to 35 whenever the salary is going to be less than 40k and whenever the loan amount is going to be more than let us say 5 lakhs and whenever the duration is going to be less than 3 years or something like that they are becoming defaulters 80 percent chances that they are going to be defaulters actually let us say that is what we have been understood from the data that is what we have been understood from the data actually guys so in that case what we can do is based on this particular understanding whenever a new customer comes whenever a new customer comes what we are going to do you will try to find out is his characters are matching with this particular data whenever it is matching with this particular data you can predict he could be a defaulter in the future that's why don't give any loan or go for more and more verification just take care before giving a loan to this particular customer please take care 80 percent chances that he is going to be a defaulter actually okay so that is going to be what we are trying to understand from that past data but problem here is data is not a small data as compared with the earlier we have a very large volumes of data large volumes of data a lot a lot of columns are there a lot of features are going to be there actually so the dimension is going to be very higher dimension data actually so to analyze this kind of a data what we are trying to do is guys what we are trying to do is we are taking the help of some kind of a machines what the point is to understand these huge volumes of data huge volumes of data we are taking the help of some kind of a machines we are going to take it actually guys so give this data to the machines give this data to the machines machines are capable to understand that particular data 
and these are going to be the insights which machines are going to be finding it actually guys maybe you will get a doubt sir can the machines can learn yes absolutely yes machines are capable to learn now up to now whenever we go to any programming languages guys that means whenever we went to any programming languages okay so why do you require a programming language first of all why do you require a programming language guys whenever i say why should i require a programming language means hope you remember machines cannot understand the human language machines can't understand the human language that's why the machines has to be the machines has to be instructed with some coding why do you require a programming language why because is machines cannot understand them machines cannot understand them actually being the machines cannot understand our human instructions it is going to be nothing but we have to write a program we have to write some kind of a program we have to write it actually guys right we have to write a program but now the machines now the experts are saying that from all these years from decades of time we are writing some code we are writing some logic okay and why the machines has to be always it should be instructed so observe simple technique actually guys when i give the input as 10 comma 20 if you want to get 30 as an output you have to write the code for addition of two numbers we have to write something like an addition of two numbers we have to write it now what the experts are saying it actually guys what the experts are going to be saying is why should i from so many decades of time we are writing all this particular code we are going to be writing it actually why not the machines can understand that means if i give 10 comma 20 as an input if i want to get 30 as an output why can't the machine can understand that it is coming by the addition of two numbers it is going to be coming as an addition of the two numbers so why the machines cannot study them why the machines cannot understand them that is what we are talking about that so don't think that this machine learning has been started in the recent years it was successful in recent years actually guys but it was started around in 1959 it was started actually guys it was initially started by a computer expert who is an expert in gaming who is working in ibm his name is arthur samuel i'll talk about this history later actually guys in 1959 around in 1960s it was started actually guys at that time only this computer experts has started uh, uh, started verifying why every time you have to write a program hope you understood guys normally in a programming language they will give the requirement if input is 10 comma 20 if your output should be 30 you please write the logic for that in machine learning what we are saying is if input is 10 comma 20 and output should be 30 the machine will identify that how this 30 is coming from that particular input it will decide whether you have to add the two numbers whether you have to subtract the numbers whether we have to multiply them or whether we have to divide them or something like that okay so machines are going to identify that it is coming due to some addition of two numbers or it is coming due to the subtraction of the two numbers something like that actually so give the data to the machine machines are going to study the data okay and it is going to get you some kind of an insights now based on these insights whenever the new that means the future customers actually whenever a new customer comes so whether to give the loan or whether not to give a loan so we can decide it actually depending on some kind of a rules what the machines has been studied about that that is what we are trying to do it actually guys that is what we are trying to do it actually guys that is all about how we are going to be gets working with this particular the concept called as a machine learning so what is machine learning is all about guys so giving the data to the machine it is nothing but giving some data to the machine and we are going to make the machine to study the data actually or we are going to make the machine to learn from that particular data actually based on that the machine will start learning whatever it has been learned or whatever it has been understood from the data based on that we are going to be doing some kind of a predictions what we are going to do it actually guys it's all about predictive analysis understand the past and based on that predict the future if anybody ask you like whether today it will rain or not or whether tomorrow it will rain or not so will it rain tomorrow for example if anybody ask you how do you analyze it actually how do you do it actually it's not like we are going to toss a coin and we are not going to say that if it is head it is going to be something or if it is a tail it is going to be something 
So what happened in the past 10 days from the last part past 10 days, every day at some particular point of time, it was raining actually. From past 10 days, it was raining. Today also it was raining. So chances is that tomorrow also it will rain actually. But how we are able to say it is depending on the past 10 days experience. But for example, if you ask a scientist, the, the geologist or something, if you ask about those, uh, the whatever that particular department, they will look at the whatever the satellite pictures and all these things, they will say that. But as a layman, as a, as a normally, we are not ever able to satellite pictures and all these things. So we don't look at the satellite pictures and all these things. From the last 10 days, it was raining. So chances is that tomorrow also 90% chances that it will rain actually. So understanding the past and analyzing the past and predicting the future. But here, the machines are going to be taken the help actually. I guess. Machines are going to learning the data actually. But sir, how the machines can learn actually? If machines are learning automatically by themselves, then what is our work actually? Guys? Machines can't learn automatically by themselves. Guys. There is the main powerfulness. The main powerfulness is going to be the algorithms actually. Guys. They are called as machine learning algorithms. Maybe while you are learning some languages like C, C++, Java, you may be heard about something like a sorting algorithms. Okay. Same as it is, here we are going to be learning something about what we can say about is guys, we are going to be gets working about something called as the machine learning algorithms is what we are going to be using them guys. We are going to be using some kind of an, a machine learning algorithms what we are going to be using it actually. We are going to be using a machine learning algorithms actually guys. So here that means as part of our machine learning class or a data science class, understanding all about this particular algorithms is only the main important topic actually guys. It is going to be the main important topic is going to be understanding about this particular algorithms. So we are going to learn all the kinds of algorithms. We are going to learn it actually, guys. We are going to learn about all kinds of algorithms. We are going to be learning it actually. Okay. So that is what exactly we are going to be doing as of this particular application, guys. As of this application, we are going to be doing it actually, guys. Okay. So what about the concept actually, guys? We are going to be studying about how these algorithms are going to be gets working how these particular algorithms are going to be working is what we are going to be trying to understand it actually, guys. Okay. So simply it is not going to be learning a programming language or it is not going to be learning any tool. We are not going to be learning it actually, guys. Main important is we are going to learning about some kind of an algorithms. So how the machine will learn? Machine can't learn it independently by itself. It is going to learn with the help of some kind of an algorithms it is going to learn. So what are those particular algorithms? How that particular algorithms will work? What is the maths and stats behind that particular algorithms? That is what we are going to mainly, we are going to study in this particular class. Not only that actually guys, there are multiple skills are going to be required actually. Technical aspects, I will discuss it in the next class guys. What are the technical aspects? I'll tell you in the next class. But mainly in our classroom training, in our class, in our sessions, we are going to learn all about this particular algorithms only guys. There are different algorithms like decision tree algorithm, something like we are having something called as an KNN. Uh, we have Navi base, we have random forest. These are all some kind of an algorithms actually guys. Just for a quick understanding, I can tell you, you can just go online and you can search about what are going to be machine learning algorithms actually guys. You simply say, what are going to be machine learning algorithms? So mainly you should be an expertise in them actually guys. Mainly you have to be familiar with this kind of an algorithms actually. Okay. Don't worry about that. They will talk about 11, 15. Don't count them. We are going to be having some kind of an algorithms what we are having it actually. Just an example guys. Just I'm showing you some kind of an online resources I'm going to tell you. So top 10 machine learning algorithms for beginners actually. So we have a different types of algorithms like you can see them. Like as I told you know, decision tree, KNN, which is going to be K nearest neighbor algorithm, which is going to be linear regression, logistic regression, SVM, support vector machines, random forest, dimensionality reductions, gradient boosting and ADA boosting algorithms. These are going to be some of the algorithms. Every algorithm is going to work by using some kind of an, what we can say is some mathematical concept will be there. 
So we have to study about those particular mathematical concepts actually, guys. So that is what I am going to explain as part of our training, our actual the main training curriculum. We are going to be discussing about that. But to implement this particular concepts of machine learning, we have to use some kind of a language we have to use, isn't it? We have to use some kind of a language we have to use. So which language we are going to learn? So to implement this machine learning, guys, mainly popularly, we have two languages are there. Anyone guess which, which languages are mostly used for popularly for machine learning? So Python and R. Yes, absolutely. It is going to be Python and R actually, guys. So don't think that Python, Linux, sir, anyhow, again, you came to programming language. No, you cannot treat the Python and R as a programming language, guys. We don't write any like a lengthy programs like what we write it in Java or whatever we are going to write it in other languages. We don't do them, actually, guys. It's a learning is very, very simple. Python is a very simple language, guys. A very simple language and very easy language it is going to be. So as part of our course curriculum, we are going to be learning both Python and R. End to end, I am the only fact, the only trainer, guys. Okay, I'm I'm an expert in Python as well as an expert in R. Expert in Python R R means I'm not an Python expert. To implement machine learning, whatever the Python that is required, in that I was an expert with that. That's it. Up to my scope and my knowledge is only up to the data science, AI, machine learning concepts only if we implement them. So whatever the Python concepts that are required for our concepts up to that extent, I'm going to teach you guys. I was an expert in that and also an expert in the R language also. Actually, I started my data science with R initially in 2017. Initially, I started in R and I then I moved to Python actually, guys. So most of the people who start who starts with Python, they can't become an expert in R because they don't like to learn the R. It's a little bit difficult, guys. Only 10% people will be there who are an expert on Python and R. Remaining 90% people, either they may be expert in Python or expert in R. But experting in both Python and R is going to be a very few people will be there. So I was one of the expert guys where I can teach you both. I can work with both Python as well as I can work with the R language. Also. Both of them, I'm going to be working with them. I'll use some topics in R, some topics. Most of the topics, I do it in Python only guys. But some of the topics I'm going to teach you, it's not just like an outline of the R. We'll go a little bit in depth into the R language guys. Almost all somewhere around. 10 to 15 days actually guys, almost two weeks of time. Almost all two weeks we are going to be spending on the R language, we are going to do that actually. Two weeks. It is very quite similar to the Python only guys. Whatever the implementations we have been done in Python, all implementations we can do it as part of the R language, what we can do it. So I'll show you all that kind of a skills guys, all that skills, whatever you have been done in Python, same skill we are also going to be doing in our language also, we are going to be doing it actually. That's not a uh, problem in that. Okay. So that is going to be one of the um, programming language or scripting language what we have to learn. And mainly we are going to learn um, with respect to the Python and R only we are going to learn guys. Mainly we are going to learn with machine learning. Our main topics, I'll, I'll, share, I'll share you my course curriculum also guys. Machine learning and deep learning and which is going to be nothing but NLP. These are all going to be the main important core concepts. We are going to learn it actually, guys. In depth about them. Machine learning from end to end, we are going to learn it actually, guys. Deep learning and NLP also. At least we are going to cover the major concepts of NLPs and deep learning concepts. We are going to learn it actually. And along with that, we are also going to learn about a big data systems. As I told you, no, it is going to be big data systems also. We are going to work with them which is going to be Spark. Even I was a specialist in Spark also, actually, guys. So nowadays, uh, you are hearing about a course, actually, guys. They are talking it as an Azure Databricks. So the name is, so many people does not know about this, actually, guys. The things that Azure Databricks, ADB, there are going to be gets calling it as, actually. Azure Databricks is nothing but, it is working with the Spark, actually, guys. It's actually Databricks integrated with the Azure. It is not a Microsoft product, actually, guys. It's a Databricks is actually a product. It's not a product actually, guys. It's a platform which was created by Spark community. They integrated this Databricks into Azure as well as it has been integrated with Amazon or it has been integrated with the cloud. You can work with any one of them. 
So Databricks is integrated with Azure as well as Amazon as well as cloud. I am going to be working with the type of a big data systems. A little bit, a little bit introduction to Hadoop. Okay, MapReduce programming, some kind of fan hive or some kind of fan pig and some scoop. Okay, these are all some kind of an Hadoop frameworks actually, guys. A little bit introduction with them and we are going to be getting working with the Spark actually. So don't think that we require some kind of an Azure account or something like that. It's not required, guys, because from the Databricks, we have a community edition is there. Uh, I'll tell you guys, later I'll tell you. Community means it's a free account actually. So this is actually Databricks actually, guys. If you want, you can go to the databricks.com. Go to databricks.com actually, guys. This is actually the databricks.com. So this Databricks only, guys, it will be integrated with your Azure account. If you go to the Azure account, if I just go to, you can open you, you can open your Azure account actually, guys. It's not a big problem actually. Just go to the Azure account. There you will be having some different products are there and go to the analytics. You can see it actually, guys. Can you see? Design the AI with application Spark-based analytics. It is the same Databricks only. The same Databricks, which was integrated with the cloud technology, which was integrated with the cloud technology. Same thing, I can do it here. As well as same thing, I can do it here. But if you want to do it in Azure, you have to pay some money. Whenever you want to work here, we don't require to pay any money because here we are having some kind of a community edition is going to be there. We'll work with the community edition. We'll work with the community edition.